it might as well also be first person Devil May Cry, yes, but uh, it owes that to its inspiration, which be would be the new Doom games. All right, so last time I played this, I was not feeling well. I was starting to feel better, but I had COVID. Now I'm back to playing it, and I am feeling better. Uh, so this time around, we're going to have webcam. Billy, don't you lose my number. You're entering an insane world. That dialogue pops up every time I step outside. Let me just add the webcam here. Shrink it. See, now, now it's a good thing that I lean down into the microphone when I play games. Would you rather see my chin or my ears, huh? Because I have to lean in close to speak into the microphone, and my webcam is as far away as it can be. So, there's not too much I can do about it. Besides, uh, my chin would be obscured by my pop filter anyway. So, I'm sorry to all of you chin lovers out there. But you're not getting any of mine. <laughs> okay, so the last thing we did was we entered, uh, we entered the new area. And what we're going to want to do right off the bat here, I think, probably a smart move would be to gather up our supplies from the... I'm not equipped for this. It's okay, you can just go outside. Uh, it's time for me to get confused about the controls all night. By the way, does the webcam look fine where it's positioned? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to take a couple of trips between what are those bats doing? Between here and the the mansion training facility. God damn it. It's not why to open your inventory. You know, what? I'll probably not run into any monsters, right? doesn't even obscure the UI in the menu. I assure you it was not intentional. It's pure coincidence that it worked out that well. You know, I do forget, every time I play this game, I, I kind of forget just how much I admire its uh, visual style.
This game was realistic looking, especially for its time, but it made it look good. It didn't make it look like realism for the sake of realism. Why is this game zooming in on the doors like OG Resident Evil? I hate to break it to you, Sky. But this came out in the era of OG Resident Evil. Uh... The, the door transitions thing remained with the series until Resident Evil 4 came out. That was the first one to do away with it. In some sense, it has returned with Resident Evil 7 and 8, simply because those games are first person. So when you walk through a door, your camera gets quite close to it. But, um, if you're ever curious to see... Well, I don't need my Magnum ammo. Fuck. If you're ever curious to see, um... A little something that came along before Resident Evil, made by Capcom, that laid the groundwork for Resident Evil, check out... Uh, there's a, there's a game on the NES. You'll have to YouTube it, because it didn't come out in America. But it's called Sweet Home. I believe that's what it's called. And it is a NES horror RPG by Capcom. And when you walk through doors, it transitions. With the, a little animation that shows just the door opening. Any relation to Home Sweet Home? It's based on a Japanese... Hold on, let me fact check myself. Yeah, it, okay, so it's based on a Japanese horror film of the same name. Battles play out it during during normal gameplay as a top-down view like Zelda, classic Zelda. But the battles play out in first-person view like a dungeon crawler. And, uh... You fight zombies and ghosts and other things. While exploring a mansion. Um... Solving puzzles and collecting items. And this isn't just some random NES game that Capcom liked. This was a Capcom NES game. So, it's not like they got inspiration from it. It's just... It's evident that this concept is something they've been wanting to... They had been wanting to make for a while. Resident Evil kind of feels like looking at the history of Capcom's games. It kind of feels like there were people at Cop Capcom who wanted to make, you know, who wanted to make the first Resident Evil, and they were pretty much just waiting for the hardware to get to the point where they could. If that makes sense. Because, uh, I... Off stream, I played the SNES RPG Breath of Fire, which is a Capcom RPG on the Super Nintendo, and it's it's a fantasy setting. It's 
a little on the generic side, but I like the battle system. And um, I like some of the, the things they did with the cast of characters so far. It has uh, a town in it called Romero, which is has a curse when you get there. And as you're exploring Romero, eventually you come back to it, and it's been overrun with zombies. Now, in the film industry, there's a very famous George Romero who created, pretty much created, zombie movies. ready to hunt a bat. Also, to loop back around to Romero and Capcom, George Romero was originally set to direct the first Resident Evil movie. What happened? Capcom felt Romero's Resident Evil was going to be too much like the game, and that's not what they were after. It might sound strange, but what Capcom wanted... Fuck. Was... Not a retelling of a game that already could be played. Oh, this sucks. Maybe use a little more ammo than I wanted to, but whatever. Knowing me, I'll finish Resident Evil games with all of the ammo you can collect in the game. Just sitting in a box. It looks like you could use something to get up there. Like a grappling hook that I left all the way back at the beginning of the game. Like that. You think I could use that? All uh, right, Rebecca, it's going to be your turn to shine here in a minute. You've been a star in Dead by Daylight for a little while now. I'm going to go save real quick because I, cause I, I kind of kicked that boss's ass. She does seem hyper-focused. Right now, I think she's hyper-bored of standing in the same spot for who knows how long. Just keeping that front door open for me. Hey, Taken. How's it going?
By the way, I'm going to do a test real quick. Just because I'm paranoid now. Warning. Okay. Test is over. I was making sure my audio channels were not swapped. Also, uh, how does the uh, game audio sound? Sound good? Sounds like you should be done with Doom 2 anytime now, Taken. Alright. Oh, you already finished it. Well, there you go. This way. Roger. I'll go alone. Okay. By that he means you'll go alone. Because you're gonna go grab that uh funny grappling hook that we left all the way back at the beginning of the game. I do uh I do like the, the classic Doom games. It's, this might sound odd, but Classic Resident Evil is a very comfortable game for series for me to play. Well, Resident Evil in general, but um, the Classic ones are cozy. Like, I play the Classic Resident Evil games and they help they help me relax even though they're games that are built to make the player anxious you know limited inventory constantly so you never feel like you have enough of anything. Things like that, but instead of feeling- instead of making me feel anxious, it just exhilarates me. And the atmosphere relaxes me. Hello, boys. Why are there so many of you? Are you, have you guys been on fire since the train crashed? I should have known I was going to need that thing. Is there anything else in here I might need? No. It'd be kind of cool if you could get back on the train and it, it explore it sideways.
Oh, excuse me. So now we are heading up into a mysterious hole in the ceiling. Sounds like a good time. Is that where God is hiding? What a sentence that is. You know what, that would be a perfect throwaway line to put in a horror game just to be creepy. Like you're exploring an old abandoned house and you're you're exploring all the rooms and there's a ladder up to the attic and but the the, the little door that you pull down is locked. And as you find in the room you find the key and you also find a note that just says God's hiding in the attic. I am actually not aware of the, the secret ending of Doom Eternal, but go ahead and share what it is. I don't mind. I don't think Sky minds either. I'm gonna guess it involves the Doom Marine's bunny in some way. See, here's the, here's the thing, right? What are we going to send up there with Rebecca? Because we have very limited options here. Hopes and prayers. Live, laugh, love. Billy, where'd you put the grenade launcher? Billy? Billy, you, you left it in the spot where nobody can see it. Sending Rebecca up there with a grenade launcher. Uh, Billy, where'd you put the flame rounds? I, I have a hunch these are going to come in handy. going in. Which one was it? Wait, which tile is it? Oh, the door's just unlocked now. Okay, so, yeah, it looks like we can go up that hole, and that's about it. <sighs> Lead the way, Rebecca. I'll go. Yeah. I sent her up here with a health item, right? Nope!
She'll be fine. The door is now unlocked. Is that it? Is that all we had to do alone? I was expecting some shenanigans. That went too smooth. Too smooth for comfort. All right, Billy, you're putting the shotgun down. Swapping back to a handgun for now. Let's regroup. Roger. Oh yeah. You got to get you got to group your loot up. What is the guy's name? Billy. Billy is not Carlos, no. Carlos is from Resident Evil 3. But, as I'm sure you've noticed, every Resident Evil, just about, has a male character and a female character as lead roles. It's just, that's that's how it started with Resident Evil 1, and that's that's how they kept it. Whether it's two new characters, a new character and an old character, two old characters, there's one male, one female. And I'm not saying that as a complaint of any kind. And if anything, I... I've always vibed with it. Simple elevator chute for transporting items. It appears to be connected to the operating room. Some, send something to the operating room? No, but there's a dumbwaiter here, and you know what that means. Split up puzzles. Marcus's diary, too. This page has been torn out. Trouble is unlikely, but I closed my babies up in a special capsule. But it won't be safe if I hold onto it myself. I'll hide it in that place. To hide a leaf, put it in a forest. To open the capsule, the special tripping... Stripping agent is necessary. You might trip if you strip. No way Spencer's lackeys could figure out how to make it. Those idiots don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. Yeah, so here's the interesting thing, and this is this is Resident Evil 1, so this is the first entry in the series. Not what we're playing right now, but what I'm talking about. You have Jill and Chris as playable characters right from the get-go. You can choose either character. It doesn't tell you the benefits of choosing one or the other. You have to figure that out on your own. The benefit of choosing Jill is that she gets a lockpick, so there are certain doors that she can open with her starting item. It's a little D&D-like in that regard. Chris does not get the lockpick. 
Instead, he has to find small keys for all of the doors that can be lockpicked. Uh, Jill gets help from Barry a few times in a few situations that can save her life slash the player's life. Chris does not. Chris gets help from Rebecca in different ways and less life-saving ways, more helping you with some puzzles and she can heal you a couple of times. Which char whichever character you don't play as is still in the plot. They take on a role uh, that is assigned to whichever one is not played as and you, you will end up having to rescue whichever character you didn't choose if you want to get the very best ending. So essentially, whichever character you don't play as goes off and does their own thing. This bookshelf contains a number of books about viruses. The titles are all unfamiliar to you. So there's a very obvious hole in the ceiling. There, and I can't seem to do anything with it. Oh, maybe I just have to... Maybe I just have to do this. Let me grab a drink real quick. There's a computer here. Doesn't turn on when you press the power button. Um, you can just post it in the general in the game section on the server. Just mark it as a spoiler. Laboratory manager's diary. Today under dis uh, director's Marcus's. Today, under Director Marcus's orders, I changed the platform entry code. Later, I asked him what the source of the entry code was. You can just write spoiler at the beginning. Put a spoiler warning. There is a proper way to do it, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Later, I asked him what the source of the entry code was. He told me it was based on something significant in his children's growth. But the director is a loner. He isn't married. And he sure doesn't have any children. What did he mean? There you go. Use whatever that that is before and after. Double line af before and after what you're typing. According to Sky. Hey, look who it is! I had a feeling. Keep in mind, Sky, his keyboard is probably not the same exact layout as ours. A collection of leech samples. What's the button? No. I mean, there is a chance that that button is there, but the, uh... He has a ZIAF keyboard. Or whatever it is. The shelf contains a large number of chemicals. Oh, well, there we go. 
The labels are so dirty that you can't tell what's inside. Alright, for now, I'm just gonna set... my grappling hook down. We're going to push the button and see what happens. One of the capsules is glowing. Okay. Capsule appears to contain a specimen of a leech. The lid won't budge. Maybe it's sealed with some kind of special material. It's sealed with Nickelodeon Gek. I like how much gasoline they're giving me. That train looks familiar. I wonder why that train looks so familiar. Oh, this looks like a fun room. Look at this motherfucker's head move. Oh, okay. I did a magic trick and I made it disappear. Yes. Leech Growth Records, February 3rd, 1978. Administered, ad administrated tea into four leeches. Their will to survive leads them first to parasitism and predation. Then they breed and multiply. Such a single-minded biology makes them attractive candidates for bioweapons research. Afterwards, no major changes observed. February 10th, 1978. Seven days since administration of tea. Rapid growth to double former size. Signs of transformation emerging. Spawning successful. They double their numbers in one hour, but their ravenous appetites lead them to cannibalism. Hastened to increase food supply, but lost too. March 7th, 1978. Provided them with live feed, but lost half. When the live food fought back. However, 
the leeches are learning from experience and are beginning to exhibit group attack behavior. They are also ceasing cannibalism. Their evolution is exceeding expectations. April 22, 1978. The leeches no longer exhibit individual behavior. Even when not feeding, they move as a collective. They consume everything I offer with remarkable efficiency. April 30 and... I don't think that's correct. 1978. An employee has stumbled onto my experiments. Can a human be a food source? How will the leeches respond? June 3rd, 1978. A day worthy of commemoration. Today they began to mimic me. Surely they recognize their father. Wonderful children. No one will take you away. All right, remember June 3rd, 1978, because that's, that's an important date to him. Uh, it's been so long since I played Doom 2 that I can't really pick a favorite map from the, from that one. It's full of poisonous gas, so the safety lock has been activated. It appears to be a device for pumping gas into the room next door. The device is empty right now. Looks like some kind of chemical. Put it in the mixing set. The green chemical is already in your mixing set. Add the chemical. No. What, what do I, why do I already have a chemical in my mixing set? The container is filled with a green chemical. It appears to have neutralizing effects on poisons. Well, goddamn, use it on that. I just, like, ate it. Oops. The container is filled with a red chemical. It doesn't appear to be useful by itself. It's been replenished with fresh bioorganic fluid. The surrounding equipment is running. How much ammo do I have? Oh, plenty. These guys look like the uh, pilots from Star Wars. This is Red Leader. Looks like some kind of chemical. Put it in the mixing set. Sure. The green chemical and red chemical have been mixed to form a stripping agent. Can I use that on, on this? Ooh, I'm a stripper. Investigators report Dr. Marcus, co-founder with President Spencer of the Umbrella Corporation, disappeared 20 years ago. The results of his research have been kept under wraps the entire time. The reason became clear here at the training facility run by Dr. Marcus. 
Well, not a here exactly, but underground. When we ventured below, we understood. There, we found the evidence of Dr. Marcus's research into the T-virus prototype called Progenitor. Progenitor. There we go. The evidence of years of hideous experimentation that used company employees as guinea pigs. We cannot know how many were forced to become subjects, but based on the evidence, no less than 20 individuals were involved. Some of them were taken deliberately to keep the corporation's secret safe. When the doctor, where the doctor is now, I don't know. But considering the recent rapid growth of Umbrella Corporation, I can't help but think that this research is continuing. Yes, his experiment lives and continues to grow in the dark. Those things, the fruit of his research, they filled this facility. The rest of the notebook pages are missing. The store is decorated with the with a bust of Marcus. There's a space in the base for some kind of object. Nothing happens. Maybe you're using the wrong key. Okay. So I could send an item to Billy, but what what would I want to send him? Is there anything down here that he would want to explore? I think it was more going for it was his bust and not a bust, but it's okay. This was back in the days of translation still being wonky here and there. Shit. You just full of surprises. Not what I wanted to do. A blue sculpture, specially shaped in the form of a leech. I don't find leeches all that gross, I'm going to be honest with you. I used to get them on me when I would play outside as a kid. Ah. Well, at least they had the decency to warn us that that guy was out there. Billy gets to deal with him.
Now, if I'd experienced a, uh, um, what's that movie called? If I had experienced something like the scene in... Hold on. What's that movie... Oh, shit. The kid gets a leech on his dick. Stand By Me. That's the name of the movie. There's a scene in the movie Stand By Me where one of the one of the main cast members gets a a leech on his dick and he pulls it off and then he's just there's lots of blood. Well, the grenade, the grenade launcher is not fitting in there. Yep. All right. Well, I, I have these for you, Billy. There you go. Yeah, I was able to remember the movie's name because of the song that it shares its name with. Also titled Stand By Me. Alright, Billy, you ready to take on Leech Man? I hope so. I hope these are enough or we're shit out of luck. Billy, please. How did you do that? No, I didn't mean to switch characters. God damn it. Fuck the controls, please. Please. Billy, just run. Just run, Billy. Fuck this guy. God damn it. Watch where you're sticking that thing, pal. I don't need to be reminded of all the times Billy died last time I played this.
A large painting hangs on the wall. The title reads, Woman in Love with a Dead Man. It's a very specific title for an art piece. Take the input reg coil. Something else here. There's something written on the back of the photograph. To James, to commemorate your graduation, 1939. Judging from the age, that guy could be Marcus's son, or grandson. You're wondering what guy he's talking about. He's talking about the guy who's been controlling the leeches. Mysterious objects are floating in the water. Hi. Say goodbye to your head, asshole. How's that for implied violence? Alright, time to run around my friend again. Stop! I'm going to send her the red coil, too. I don't know if she's going to need it, but just in case. All right. I remember when I played this game as a kid, loathing this part. So far, it hasn't been so bad, except for the one leech dude in the hallway that Billy can't kill. Other than that, though, it's been pretty halfway decent. Grab the first aid spray, please. Thanks. Let's go in this funny room. Yeah, they react to the sound. Alright, what am I hearing? This, this guy is desperate.
not even playing around with you right now. What is this? Oh, that's the canister for clearing the gas room. All right. One thing I like about these, the classic Resident Evil games, they have the survival horror elements going for them, right? But they also have very adventure game-esque puzzles to solve. It's like two different, very different genres of games clashed together. Is this... Does this have to be filled or is it all, all good to go? A small tank containing a chemical agent that could be used to sterilize rooms contain contaminated by a virus. Okay, time to spray the Windex. All right, good night, Taken. Thanks for coming by. Oh, yeah. Fuck you. Breeding room key. Want to go fuck in the breeding room? There's a special room for that? Yeah. I'm ready, asshole. Wait, is it the one downstairs? It's the one downstairs. breeding in here. Just a couple of predators, nothing too major. How's that for up close and personal? Research to date has shown that when the progenitor virus is administered to living organisms, 
Violent cellular changes cause a breakdown in the system. Furthermore, no satisfactory method has been found to control the organisms for use as weapons. Clearly, greater conditioning, uh, coordination at the cellular level is essential to enable further growth. I conducted a number of experiments in an effort to find a breakthrough. This is my report. Insecta. Perhaps because these ancient animals have been genetically stable for millennia, when administered with the progenitor virus, they, exhib they exhibited only explosive high energy growth and increased aggressiveness. It is extremely difficult to envision using them as BOWs. Amphibia. Injecting a frog with the virus resulted in an increase in leaping power and abnormal tongue growth. However, no change in mental ability was observed. Furthermore, an abnormal appetite resulted in the test subject randomly attacking all moving objects. Usefulness as for BOW is limited. Mammalia. The progenitor virus was merged with monkeys' cellular DNA, resulting in increased fertility. The resulting young exhibited improved aggressiveness and some increased mental capacity. As a side effect, visual power was lost, but this was offset by an improvement in hearing ability. However, they were unsatisfactory as weapons. It does seem that no progress can be made without making humans the base organism. This is, we're, we're reading the research that led up to them making Mr. X and Nemesis. Two bioweapons made out of humans. Right, I have the dial for the stove. these so I can give them give them to Billy Boy. We will probably make it at least to the final area of the game tonight and then next time I get a chance to stream this will probably be the last time I have to stream it. Uh, but I, I doubt we have enough time tonight to finish this. Uh, okay, so, right, let's send those shotgun shells in the dial to Billy. So he can go play around with his friend down there some more. Exactly. It's going to be a play date now. Billy ain't screwing the pooch on this one.
That's what comes up when I search elevator music. We are going to save real quick before we continue. Since things are going okay. Not terrible, but okay. I like how on the ground level this is a church and on in on the above levels it's a research lab where we make monsters. That is ever so excellent. Okay. Why does it take him so long to throw? That's right, Billy's too stupid to combine herbs. Oh, what an idiot. It's a life or death situation here, and he's just like, nah, I don't know what to do with this. Okay, we'll just send him up to Rebecca and she'll combine him for us. I'm getting an itch to stream Resident Evil 4 again. Which is funny, because I've already beat Resident Evil 4 twice this year.
It would be nice if we could send items to each other quicker, but it's fine. think you'll know how to use it. I, I do I do like Billy rocking the jeans. It's a good look. Dirty tank top, jeans, tribal tattoos. Fuck, I did A. I did A on, on the numbers. Alright, it's not the year he graduated. It's gotta be the year, the commemorative year of his leeches becoming self-aware or whatever. Seven three nineteen seventy eight. Sky Knight wrote it down for us. I regret to inform you that it didn't like that answer either. Let's read the hint again. Not the hint. Well, it only wants a four-digit number. Alright, I asked him what the source of the entry code was. He told me it was based on something significant in his children's growth. The doctor's a loner. He isn't married. 7378? You think that might be it? Like, just the last two digits in the day? That Yeah, you might be right about that. Doesn't like that answer either. Oh. 
You ready for this? Four, eight. Two, one. Never mind. I have to look at it closer. I'll show you what I'm looking at, though. Uh, in this page, the number four is highlighted red. Administered tea into four leeches. Uh, seven days since ad uh, administration of tea. Rapid growth to double former size. Signs of transformation emerging. Spawning successful. They double their numbers, so four, eight, but lost two. So not four, eight becomes six. That was the mistake I made. Four, eight, six, three. Got it. Maybe I could use this. Rebecca here. Over. Billy, I found something here that might make you happy. It's an aerial cable car. Really? That's great. Now we can get out. Yep, let's regroup as soon as possible. Over. Roger. Hell yeah. There's a lever here. Pull it. Yep. And I know Rebecca has access to the second floor of this room. So we will finally be able to regroup. So what we're going to want to do is when we get this train loaded up and set up, we're going to want to carry as much of our shit in here as we can. I'm going to want to grab that. I don't think I need the grappling hook anymore. I'm going to regret that statement, but... Maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. Let's see if we can't get this train running. That's got to be an uh, item for the train. And that train is... Just through, just through this door over here. Follow 
follow me. Okay. We're together again, Billy. Can we board the train? Oh, hold on. There's something here, too. Output red coil. Necessary to get the cable car moving again. Doesn't seem to be getting any power. Okay. Well, where do we go to do something about that? Ah, oh, shit. I do need the grappling hook. I knew I was going to regret that statement. I'll go alone. Okay. Billy will run and get it real quick. After this, Resident Evil, I think the next one I do will probably be the remake of Resident Evil 1. Since it continues right off of this one. Um, but I'd like to do all of the classic ones. However, next month, a DLC for Resident Evil 8 comes out. And it, uh, it, has, you, it has you play as a character introduced at the end of Resident Evil 8, sort of. So, I'm going to be streaming that, and I won't have time to restream 7 or 8, so if you'd like to see my streams of those games, they are on my YouTube channel. This disclaimer goes out to everyone. So yeah, Resident Evil 8 is getting a DLC chapter that continues off of its ending. And I'm very, I'm very interested in checking it out. I went the wrong way. Another interesting thing about Resident Evil 8's uh, update slash DLC next month is they're adding the option to play the game in third person. So... Likely, and I've already pl I already planned to do this anyway. Someday I will restream Resident Evil Seven and Eight, uh, but I just won't have time to do it before the DLC. And I'm not gonna I don't want to put the DLC off. I'm really curious to check it out. So if you want to see me play it live, I will get around to it someday. Playing it, uh, streaming them again. Okay, let's get this train running. Then we just gotta double back, grab all all the items we can, and gather them here. Come on! Yeah. This machine regulates power input and output. You can use this to get the cable car moving.
We're in business. All right, you ready for the great the the great loot pile to uh, maneuver its way over here? Come on, Rebecca, we're traveling the safest way you can in a Resident Evil game. First we'll grab the items here, and then we'll go all the way back to the uh, training facility and grab those items too. Actually, I might have space to just grab it all in one go. It's not a lot. It's always good to enter a new area as prepared as possible. All right, this we don't need. We don't need that. So, I have magnum ammo, but I don't have a magnum yet. Is that is that correct? That would appear to be correct. Thought Billy was a Magnum? Well, he definitely is a Magnum, yeah. You know, speaking of which, that reminds me of a, a cutscene I saw in Xenoblade 2 last night that I want to show off. Let me show this off real quick. Uh, this, this particular cutscene was amazing.
This cutscene was amazing for a couple of reasons, and uh, I'll talk about them after I show them off. Uh, after I show it off. So we meet again, Aegis. Oh, it's Shellhead. Yes! Wait, who's Shellhead? As ever, your comic timing is exquisite. And you will address me as Zeke von Gembu, bringer of chaos! Or Zeke! Or the Zekenator! Make your mind up, and what the hell is a Zekenator anyway? <laughs> you may have been lucky last time. Thanks to a certain unstable cliff. But this time round, we meet on good old Terra Firma. If you think you can run from me a second time, you are quite mistaken. Nobody did any running. And anyway, shall it? What? You answer to that now? I've been wondering for a while now. But what's with a cutesy eye patch? <laughs> I'm quite glad you asked. This eye patch conceals a power too great for mere mortals to comprehend. The Eye of Shining Justice! I am sworn to keep it sealed until its power is needed to save mankind. You should count yourselves lucky. They would turn you to ash in seconds. Whatever you say, pal. He definitely isn't wearing it because he didn't have the gold for a second contact lens. How poor are you? And are you that short -sighted? By the by, what business might you have with us today? Are you thick? I'm here for the Aegis, obviously. Listen, Pam. I'm sorry, but we really don't have time to play with you today. So hurry on home, okay? What's this? Were you so frightened by our power that you wet yourself, furry ears? Did I what? You've got a lot of nerve, you one-eyed monster. N Nia, you do know one-eyed monster usually means... Huh? Means what? Um, it's, uh, Mithra, why are you blushing? Shut up! I was not expecting a dick joke to transition into a Final Fantasy reference. His face smashed into the camera, and then it shattered the screen in the style of Final Fantasy X. Keep in mind, Xenogears, or Xenoblade does not have transitions into battle. It, you know, once battle starts, it just goes. That is the one and only time we've had a battle transition. And it was right after a dick joke. I was not expecting the game to make a dick joke, nor was I expecting it to reference Final Fantasy, and it did it in the same breath. Not so far, no. We did, shortly after that scene, though, have a battle between robot maids.
That's the worst joke that I will refuse to stop doing. Alright, so we're going to save, and then we're going to make sure we can load all this stuff onto their train. I don't want it to put me on their train and escort me away with none of my shit. That would be a nightmare. I'm just glad Nintendo let them let them keep that joke in. Rebecca, please. Oh yeah, it, to, if if Nintendo had had asked them to censor that the joke there, in the U.S. release, there it would have been easier to just remove the cutscene altogether. Ah oh, shit. God damn it, Billy. What items did you have on you? Aren't you glad I saved? Aren't you glad I saved? Aren't you glad I didn't say banana even? Pick up the goddamn shotgun, what are you doing? God, you know what, fuck it. Here's what we're doing. You know what we're doing? We're loading our last save. Resident Evil Zero. So we can be properly prepared. Take that, take these. Give them to Rebecca.
There. What he has on him, he can keep. Now let's get Rebecca armed and ready for this. Get off me. Rebecca. Please. We're okay. Now, here's the final question. Can we leave? Can we drop items in the train? They really don't want us getting on this goddamn train. Billy's dead, by the way. All right. Let's see what happens. Oh good, we, it looks like we can leave items in here. What you got there, dude? The Magnum? I left all the Magnum ammo with Billy. God damn it. I, I just had to screw myself somehow, didn't I?
You know what? I might as well bring the grappling hook just in case. I was about to say I don't need it, but you know what? I m very well might. Every item is a very Nessa. Yes, these items are not for using, they're for hoarding. If I use them, I'm playing the game wrong. There we go, that's the end of that area. Look how far me and my items have come. I am going to leave that here for now. Welcome to a new area. I'm looking for a save room right now. I'm just finding lots of doors that lead to more doors at the moment. Something is being displayed. A giant humanoid being is suspended in bioorganic fluid inside a capsule. Jesus. I don't- I'm not equipped to fight you, asshole. That's right, you jump over me like an idiot. It was quiet. Too quiet. when all of a sudden it came sliding around the corner. A monster. More grotesque than anything I'd ever seen. Teeth like my mother-in-law.
this room should look familiar. I won't spoil why right away. It's tightly sealed. There's a hatch here that, that is... We can't go down. I won't spoil why right away. But I won't leave you hanging. The control panel. There's a keyhole. This elevator should look familiar too. Splinter Cell 799. How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Alright, uh, so we've activated this big elevator. We saved. We got a key, which we use. I think there were some other rooms that we should probably check out before we move on. It's locked from the other side. Alright. Well, that takes care of that. Um, I feel like I should probably bring that magnum with me. <laughs> no, not Billy. The other magnum. I feel like Rebecca's not very concerned about saving Billy at the moment. Is the next thing we're doing riding the elevator down? Because if that's the case, that's the next area we're bringing all of our items. I'm playing this game like a pack rat. Also, by the way, if you haven't figured it out, this is the elevator that we ride at the end of Resident Evil 2. It just has a train on it by then. Can't leave we can't leave it on the on the elevator. No items on the elevator. Damn it. All right, let's see if we can even activate this. It's a lot less urgent when the whole building isn't blowing up.
Are you okay, Rebecca? Where is everybody? They should have arrived here before me. Haven't you seen them? That's unfortunate. If we go straight from here, we should arrive at an old mansion which Umbrella uses for research. Come on, let's go. Wait, I've got to find Billy. Billy Cohen? You mean you found that criminal? Yes, but we got separated and... No point worrying about him. He won't make it. Come on, let's go. Sir, please. I need to find him. Don't worry, I'll catch up with you. Rebecca, I... All right, just be careful. I love the piano. I never saw him again. Also, that statement uh, is very true, unfortunately. We'll, we'll see Enrico one more time in Resident Evil 1. The door reads security room. There's no need to search this place. We can't revisit all the locations from Resident Evil 2? Are you kidding me? You're telling me they didn't include the entire Resident Evil 2 in this game too? What scoundrels. Oh, yeah. Uh, Zero is a great time. Uh, I, I don't like it quite as much as I like Resident Evil 1 Remake. But uh, it, it's a, it is a fun time. I haven't played it since I was a kid, so this isn't a blind playthrough, but it, it's been a while. I need the elevator key. Alright, I'm just going to have to combine these and go pick up that key over there. Can I ride the elevator back up? I should be able to, right? It refuses to move any further. Well, there was a locked door up there, so I imagine somehow we can get back up there, because there, there's no way I've just lost all my items. I refuse to believe that. No need to search this place. I'm glad she knows that. She knows to stay out of Resident Evil 2's final area. She's like, that's this not in this game. That's for another character. Feet. What is that? He wears his heart on his chest. He's got a funny twitch. You okay, dude? Nice teeth. It's okay, I brought the big gun. It's so big, I take a step back every time I shoot it. Jesus. That was the end of the, the big gun ammo. Well, we're, we're, we're okay. We're definitely okay. Oh. 
yeah, we're fine. Got him. Jesus. Stay down. And my items that I left on the train were never seen again. Including, but not limited to, my grenade launcher. Wait, is level 4 down or up? Playtime is over. You and your friends no longer amuse me. Good riddance. Now nothing will stop me from getting my revenge. Level four is down. I'll start from level one and work my way, uh, and work my way down. Because I'm really hoping that I can get those items back. Yo, uh, this is the train. That's how you know we're at the near the end of the game, because it's like, hey, here's your chance to revisit every area you've been to. Too bad you left all your items in the one spot you'll never return to. I swear to God, if that's the case, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I want my grenade launcher. Also, these headphones finally give me a reason to to play games in the dark. Now I now I have an excuse for why I don't just get up and turn the light on. Oh, good. We're, we're, my items are right over there. They're just right over there. There's something in this room with me, and I don't know what it is. But if it's anything scarier than a regular zombie, it's getting the magnum. You fucker. Don't kill me. Right, now it'll be more than a pitch black box. It'll be a pitch black box with purpose. That motherfucker got magnumed. I don't know what I used to push him off me. Uh, but I'll take it. Perfect. Now we can get all our stuff back. Which means that, truly, it's safe for me to leave my stuff here. Until it's needed. You know what, I'm gonna... Should I keep the Magnum on me? I'm gonna keep the Magnum on me for now. I'm gonna have to save this soon, but let's go see if we can save Billy.
Actually, this is probably a good spot to save because it's almost seven, and that's my that's my deadline tonight. So we're gonna save it here. We'll pick this up next next time I get the chance to. Hopefully next Friday. If not, it'll be over the weekend next weekend. But that is going to be Resident Evil Zero for now. Thank you for watching. So far, so good. Um, next time we stream that will probably be the last time we stream it. All right. Uh, tomorrow I'll be back with No More Heroes, the finale of that. And then um, Sunday I won't be streaming, but I'll be on the server. We're going to do a movie. I got a movie I want to show off. And then Monday, Persona 5. Good night. And uh, have a good one.